So there's a question that if you can answer correctly makes lucid dreaming so much easier. What's the question? Who becomes lucid? Now you're probably tempted to answer that question with the simplest, easiest answer. I become lucid. It's me. But that's the wrong answer. Right, so you probably think that sounds completely mental. Obviously it's me who becomes lucid in my lucid dream. But here's another question. Who has non-lucid dreams? Now the answer's the same. It's me. I have non-lucid dreams. But that can't be true. Both of those answers can't be true. It's a paradox. If I become lucid and I have non-lucid dreams, then they can't be the same I. And this is fundamental to lucid dream training. So there's this common misconception that lucid dreams are conscious dreams. But that's not true. In our non-lucid dreams we are conscious, it's just an altered state of consciousness. Or, if you want to put it a different way, an altered version of you. The question, who becomes lucid, forces us to face up to one of the core problems of lucid dreaming, one of the core problems of being human. And it's this misconception that self is a singular, unchanging entity which it isn't. There is a very big difference between you when you wake up in the morning, you at lunchtime, you in the middle of an argument, you in a non-lucid dream, and you in a lucid dream. There are multiple versions of you. In a lucid dream, we are trying to bring online a particular version of you that is capable of having lucid dreams. So I'm about to really oversimplify things, but from a scientific perspective, a lucid dream differs from a non-lucid dream because your prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain required for metacognition, logic and critical thinking, has come online. It's a different version of you. So in order to understand how to have lucid dreams, we have to understand who we are when our prefrontal cortex is online. And just to be perfectly clear, the brain is a lot more complicated than that. There are neurotransmitters involved, such as acetylcholine, and various other variables. But for the purpose of this video, think of lucid dreams as prefrontal cortex dreams. Most people, when they're trying to induce lucid dreams, look outwards. They look for the best lucid dreaming technique or the best lucid dreaming pill, or the best lucid dreaming book, and you see it everywhere, people offering simple external solutions to lucid dreaming. But in order to truly master lucid dreaming, you need to stop looking externally and start looking inwards. It is you that changes in a lucid dream. So the question, who becomes lucid, is a really important question, but it can pull the rug from beneath your feet and give you a bit of an existential crisis. Because the concept of self, of self-identity, is something of an illusion. The human being is not a singular thing. It is a community. It is a community of memories, a community of thoughts, a community of brain functions, a community of neurons. You are never the same person from one moment to the next, and there are various different versions of you, and only a handful of those versions of you are capable of having lucid dreams. So the person you are in non-lucid dreams can never be lucid. That person will never have a lucid dream. What happens when you become lucid in a lucid dream is you change. The version of you updates. Various different brain functions come online. So in order to understand how to become lucid, you need to understand who you are when you are lucid. Right, so time to get practical. If we're a different person in our lucid dreams, how can we be that person more often, therefore increasing our chances of having a lucid dream? Well, it boils down to our prefrontal cortex, that seat of the brain required for metacognition, logic, etc. So, if we want to be more lucid in our dreams, we have to interrupt our non-lucid self with our lucid self. How do we do that? Well, we do that through increased metacognition. So, everyone's heard of meditation. But have you heard of metatation? 
Well, probably not, because I've just invented the word. But meditation is where you start to engage metacognition regularly. Metacognition is the prefrontal cortex being active, and the question, who becomes lucid, is a meditation question, because it forces you to reflect on your inner world, reflect on your thinking in a logical, critical way. In fact, reality checks, that common lucid dreaming technique, are a form of meditation because they force you to stop doing what you're doing, to engage your prefrontal cortex, and to analyse your thinking and the world around you. It's bringing the prefrontal cortex online. But if you want to increase your chances of a lucid dream, here's a simple thing you can do every day, regularly, to do that. Ask the question, who becomes lucid? Whenever you have a spare moment, ask yourself that question. Don't just give a simple answer, really ponder that question, think about it deeply. And frankly, there is no simple answer to that question, but it is the act of asking the question that matters. It is that version of you, the questioning version of you, that can become lucid. Be that version of you more often. And whilst you're that version of you right now, hit the like button and watch one of the videos on the screen right now. I'll see you there.